Hey guys, Captain Matt, Marathon Sport Fishing. Welcome to another episode. As always, another shit show on the Falcon. I've got Miss Tamara with me today. Hi. So today we started off where we're gonna do a little sword fishing. And then I've got a I've got a new toy in the arsenal, we'll call it. So I've got a new reel we were gonna do a little black belly rose fishing. Needless to say, we were doing the sword fishing, did not hook a sword. But if you take a good look at what I've got shaking here, obviously we got into something. Okay guys, here we go. Welcome to another exciting episode of Marathon Sport Fishing. I am your host, Captain Matt Pelfrey. Grab your life jackets and hang on, it's gonna be a fun one. My good friend Todd with Getting Tight Charters out of Big Pine was out here with us, next to us today. And we were just heading to the Rosie Grounds and he radioed and said, come on over. And we got into a giant school of mahi, found a log, and we also ended up picking up a nice wahoo on it on a secret tactic that I'll show you guys towards the end of the video. So stay tuned and you'll see how we catch a wahoo amongst a pile of mahi and a bunch of other bar jacks and all right guys we just got a radio call from get tight charters he said come on over we're on the sword grounds we're going to check out what he's got going if he's hooked up or he's got something going on here Oh, he's got a frigate right here. He's on, he's on mahi. Okay. We are in a school of mahi. That's a nice fish. Hand me the gaff. Hand me the gaff. Me... Just put it right in this holder. We'll get him up here. It'll take him one second. He's not done yet. in him. Oh, she missed him. Damn it. Hard to do this one-handed. Uh, hard to do it one-handed. All right, let me see if I can get... Uh, come here. Okay. Try this again. There we go. Nice fish. That's a nice mahi. Yep. Dude, they're coming after mine. They're after mine right now. I got one on it. They're gonna grab yours too. They're looking at it. Go, 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 set the hook, set the hook. There you go. He ate my bait. Just keep him hooked, just easy. Oh, I got a different one on. We both got the same one. We both got the same one. Oh, this is gonna get tricky. Put your rod in the holder. Put your rod in the holder. Back up, back up. This one was extra hungry. I need the pliers behind me. Okay guys, this is just real early season for us for Mahi's beginning of, just kind of the beginning of the push. Normally on the boat, you see I've got about an 18 inch to 20 inch leader there with a hook and a snap swivel. Normally I carry a couple spools of like eight or 10 of those on each spool so I can just unhook them 
and throw the whole fish in the box with the hook and leader and get it out later. But since we had not been seeing any mahi yet, I did not have them on the vessel. Anyway, a little hint for you guys, keep a spool of those little leaders on, on your boat with you. All you got to do is disconnect that snap swivel and you can quickly change it out. So to, today I had to actually pull the hooks out of all of them and they were really hungry. They were swallowing the bait on, on half of them. So it took me quite a bit longer to get the hooks out than it normally would. You got him. You got to keep the rod up and tight or they get, stop, stop, let him, okay. <laughs> let him eat it, let him eat it. Stop. No, get him, get, oh, there you go. <laughs> you can't, just leave him, just let him settle down, let him settle down. Nice. All right, um, I'm, I need to bring him in the boat. So I don't want to get these two tangled up. I'm coming underneath you. Come over me, come over me, come over me. Okay, here we go. Keep him in the water, honey. Well, there's some big ones down there. All right, yeah, well, I'll check him out in a second. Let me get this hook out of this guy. He ain't big enough, but the hook. Yeah, that's a bigger one. Just keep on him. So Todd's back by the log. Oh, look at that one. That's a nice one right there. He was just at. All right, I'm gonna drop this over right here. There you go. Oh. He pulled the damn bait right. Oh, there's another one. I right, keep him. How many we got in the box? Four. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Todd said there's more over there. We can get ten a piece. Five a piece. Oh. Price, I don't know if I want to clean that many. It's a lot of mahi. Oh, look at that big one going after it right there. There, I got him hooked. Nice. It's a bigger one, Tamara. Are right, you going to switch rods? No, go ahead. Bring your head. All right. Now you're doing some color down here. He's a jumper. Because you're keeping yours here. You burn and drag off. That's fine. That's fine. He, he's fine. He's fine. Where's he going? You did with the whoa, 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 whoa. pull your rod tip over pull your rod tip over so you don't get caught in mine there you go because what's keeping them here is yours well look at them all you're yours threw up and the rest of them are eating it it's a big fish i got on here i think mine's dogging pretty good here just keep him right there that's just perfect what we want to do with him a big one where's the gaff at i don't know where the hell it ended right up oh, right there okay well, i'm probably gonna have to gaff this one just to stick it right in that holder right next to you on your left side keep him in the water keep him in the water oh my god nuts <laughs> there's a pile of them here they're, they're nice fish. Oh my gosh, look, you got another one on. Yeah, yeah. I think they're all keepers. Yeah, they're all nice fish. They're always cool about the same size, you know. Who's the gaff? Right there you are. You keep filming. I'll go. Wow, those are so pretty in the water.
Yeah, they're they're nice fish, Todd. Yeah, they are. We were just gonna go try and do a little rosy hunting when you. I'd rather catch these. I was gonna go get some rosies too, and then get a swordfish later. <laughs> Boy, there's some big ones in here. Yeah, we got one that's about 20 pounds. Wow. Yeah, there's some real big ones in here. And we want to grab that other rod, throw a chunk of bait in. Okay. We're just going around, you got to walk around the back of the boat with him. I'll keep the rod tip way out. There you go. You got him. This one is a good size one. Yep. Let me get let me get this out here. I'll deal with him when we get this out. Here. Oh shit. all right so here we go captain todd with getting tight charters out of big pine he's kind of circling my boat right now they were on the fish about 10 minutes before we got over there so they already had a limit in the box essentially I'm moving some stuff out of the way. Very important, guys, when you get into a bunch of fish, you always notice that I clear the decks on my boat. I'm getting stuff all the way. Tamara's got a nice fish on right here. Todd's doing a little filming for us. Big shout out to getting tight charters out of Big Pine. <laughs> My madness, baby! <laughs> Anybody grabbing it yet? So. Nothing on it yet? Just keep it, keep it in there, he'll get something. They're all still right here. Where's that log at? You see it back there anymore? There's one. Grabbed it. Check your bait on. Check your bait. Reel your bait in. There we go. Yeah, that's why. Here, grab this rod. Is he still on there, Tamara? Yeah. Yeah, just keep, yeah, just keep him there. That's... 21. Bunch of them over here. I, I'm a little busy right in the second. I gotta get a hook out of one. <laughs> That's a nice little show. Is he going? Because he's jumping around. I think he's a little one. Yep. You gotta get it away from the boat, and then the mahi will get it back here. All right, trade me rods, trade me rods. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's one on it. Come on, go, 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 go. <laughs> Come over the top of me, come over the top of me. <laughs> Mighty madness, baby. This is 
Awesome. This one's a little guy here. All right. Little guy, all right. How's that one you got on big ones? You just gotta, you gotta cast it away from the boat a little ways. You like my float? I kind of figured. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. That's awesome right in the head. Professional. You got a, you got a wahoo? You see the wahoo? All right, guys, you just seen me cast out a spoon there. That spoon, it's not a jigging spoon. It's a casting spoon. It's pretty heavy. The hook is all the way at the end, and I'm tied on the other end of the spoon. This particular rod is set up with 40-pound braid. The drag's at a medium to medium light on it initially for when you get a hit because you don't have mono to give you that shock absorption. So what you do with this particular spoon when you're on a floater and you see a wahoo or something, I drop the spoon down a couple hundred feet and I burn it in as fast as I can like I'm doing here. Emmer got his own hook out. Get one, Tamra. How many we got? We've got in here one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we got eight. We need two more, I think. Gonna let him bleed out a minute. Okay. Complete shit show. So I'm getting ready here to rig up another bait. If you look in the water, there is mahi as far as you can see. At one point, we were over a half a mile from that log floating there, and there was ma mahi just solid as I went back over towards the log for a half mile. As far as you could see every direction, there was just tons and tons of these guys. So hopefully we're gonna have a real busy year with the mahi like this. It was really great to see. Tamara's never seen a big school like this. So very nice early season action. Coming back this way. Okay. All right. Cast yours, cast yours way up there, Tamara. Whoa. Oh, wow, look at that. One. Whoa, there's some big ones in here, boy. That wasn't a flipper either, but he got flipped. Yeah. Well, this is a nice one on here too, Tam. Look at this one. That's awesome. Right. Okay, there you are. Watch, watch the zone. Don't roll it into the tip. Yeah, I know, they're following mine. Oh my god, that's awesome. Get him in the boat. Alright, this is what happens. Camera's on second, oh second rinse down. I think we got a limit in the box right now. We've seen a couple Wahoo. We're going to see if we can pick one of them up too. 
Yep, we got 10. Nice, hell of a nice lemon. Okay, captain's tip here, guys. I just started doing that this year. I've got that plastic ice scoop. Makes it way easier to get your fish buried in your ice bin. For the best eating fish, you definitely want to bleed them out like I've been doing there. Then we've put salt water in with the ice to make an ice brine that rapidly cools them fish off, makes the meat absolutely amazing. Somebody's on there. We had our limit of mahi and I was trying to catch the wahoo here. He would not bite the jig when I would just drop it and reel it up. So what I did was burned out about 250 feet of line on that jig, put the rod in a holder and full throttled the boat at about 12 knots and the wahoo hit it. See what it is here. Are you turning the boat? No. Hit, turn it to standby, okay? That's what it's showing on the top left says. Stand by. Okay. Bottom left says engage. Yep. Harry, what do you think we got on here? We got something. Ooh, there's a look at that big mom. Give me the gaff, grab the camera, and just film. Grab the camera, and film it. We'll get the we'll get him up here in the boat in a second. He's a nice hoop. Here we got him. Yeah, baby. Nice. Who's in the boat? <laughs> Who's in the boat? Who's in the boat? Woo. All right. Nice. All right. I just cleaned up from Mahi Madness. All right, that's, that's a nice hoo, baby. Nice yes. work, Matt. Can you see with the camera? Who is in the boat? All right. That's that awesome. was ancient Chinese secret. There we go. All right, I'm gonna grab him, get him unhooked here. We'll do that one more time. That was awesome that you did that. You like that? You'll have to show your viewers that little trick one day. Make sure the camera's on me. So guys, when you get one of these guys in the boat, you gotta be real careful. They're super, super dangerous. They will try to bite you. Got the bulk and death grip on him. Got that jig. Get down these. Get up the side here and get it on foot. There we go. Okay, will you hit the um that washout thing again? Or the village? Or the um bait well, sorry. Yep, live well. Go. I'll take a wahoo and 10 mahi over a swordfish most days. That's his heart that just came flying out. Oh my, really? Okay, we're gonna need a little clean up aisle four. Look at the blood on you. Mayhem! Wow. Summertime fishing madness. All right, guys, so we've seen this floater here. We're gonna grab it. Just a reminder to pick up trash when you're out here, if you see some. There was a couple chickens on it. We were hoping for some other stuff on it, but we're gonna grab it since we're here. All right, guys, here we go. This is the Wahoo we caught Saturday. Today is Monday. You're gonna ask to excuse my voice. It's a little hoarse, and you will see why in an upcoming episode. I'm going to say we were sword fishing yesterday with some special guests. So. Anyway, we're going to fillet out the wahoo. Very similar to fillet compared to a mahi or something. They're, um, they're back. They're, they're dorsal fins. You can hear this. They're very sharp and pointy on the end. So you want to be careful you don't get jammed in there. But other than that, pretty similar to a mahi. You want to just start a little bit above the tail. Their meat is a lot softer than a mahi, and their skin's a lot softer, but same basic design. So I'm just working my way up, up the backbone here.
again with these guys them teeth you don't even want to nick the teeth after they're laying here dad you want to be careful of the teeth on the fish so i like to cut in start my cut get coming right down to the backbone here flip him over this direction start on the bottom again right up against the bottom fins come up to about the vent and just go up around the vent and just come up kind of at an angle do not pierce the stomach right to there I always like to keep my table really clean when I'm taking care of my fish after all you're gonna eat it so Mr. Who I'm gonna run him down this direction they have a very pronounced backbone. It's it's like a mic. Again, you're gonna come across the bones. The backbone's gonna roll up and over and go back. So I like to roll the knife up and over. I just think you get a little more meat off of it. And if you don't have 200 of them to do or something, again, it just gives you a little better end product. You can hear that knife clicking along the top of that backbone. You do about three vertebrae at a time. As you get a little tighter in, I'll come in. There's pin bones all the way down on these guys. I'll come in and slice the pin bones. So there's different things you can do with a Wahoo. I'm gonna smoke this one. I'm gonna show you guys how to smoke a fish. If you haven't done it before, pretty easy so this is what we're gonna do be absolutely gorgeous meat on them so you want to leave the skin on the meat prior to smoking what I did before I filleted the fish I took the hose and just washed him off they, they have a little layer of like still a little bit of dirt on them you want to wash them off really good because you want to smoke them with that skin on so what I'm gonna do is just section him up clean clean out this section here and trim out the rib bones and then we're gonna we're gonna put him on a brine prior to smoking so again I'm gonna section this part out there's damaged meat right in the top half here prior to smoking your fish I like to smoke my fish, but I like to put it in a brine for about one day first. So the brine's pretty simple. I'm gonna use about a quarter gallon of water, so four cups, an eighth a cup of kosher salt, and an eighth cup of sugar in the rye. So you take two cups of water, and you wanna boil your, you wanna boil the salt and sugar in there in two cups of water. Okay, you can see it's all dissolved. Once that's dissolved, you take and add two cups of ice water into that to have your four cups. And then that'll cool the temperature of the water down. You don't want to put the fish in boiling water, obviously. And you want to soak your fish for, I'd say, at least eight to 12 hours. I typically do it overnight. And then I'll put them on the smoker tomorrow. I've taken and I put two cups of ice water in with the first two cups I've dissolved the liquid in. You just want that ice to kind of melt and get everything mixed up. Then I'm going to drop the fish in it and I will marinate that fish for like i said i'm going to marinate it overnight and i'll smoke it tomorrow all right guys here we go i've got the wahoo strained off now it's it um was in the brine overnight basically just getting ready to put it on the smoker here i've got the smoker set it's running 224 right now because i have had the lid open but it's going to run at 200 degrees i've cleaned off the top rack you want to scrub it really good and I'm gonna take a little extra virgin olive oil. If you got spray, that's fine. If you don't, just take regular olive oil. I put it on a paper towel. You wanna get your rack nice and oiled up. That way the fish will not stick to it. A little hot, 225 degrees there. You can probably hear my fingers sizzling. Nope, but so I've got the rack. As you can see, it's nice and oiled up. Next thing, we're gonna load the fish onto the rack. 
we load the fish skin down. I try to get it on there and not move it. And you want to keep it separated. You want it separated out so it gets really good smoke. I've got a couple smaller pieces here. There's an apparent gaff shot around them I had to trim out. Try not to move it, but there we go. Next thing I'm going to do here is put a little Everglades heat on the fish. It's a, it's a Florida based company. They make great spices. A little wind blowing here today. This is what you do when it's windy in the Keys. So I'm just giving it a real light dusting here. Alright, so that fish is dusted. It sat in the brine again all night and it's ready to go. I'm going to slide the smoker rack back right there where it's centered on the centered on the smoker. That's going to take a couple hours guys and I'll, I'll clue back in. We're going to visually look at it as it gets close to done. You're going to push down, test the fish. If it still feels a little soft, you know it's not done yet. All right guys, I've been slowly taking the fish off. As, as you're smoking your fish, you're gonna have pieces that are a little thicker, a little thinner. The thinner ones are gonna get done first. So like right here, here's kind of what I look at. You can tell it's still a little spongy here, just slightly here. That one's done. This one, it's a little bit, I can tell it's just a little soft in the middle. So if it's still a little soft in the middle, that one's probably gonna go about another 15 minutes. But I, I just take them off. And this is why you oil the grill. That's hot. Look at that. So you take them off. They don't stick to the grill that way. So that's why you clean it good and oil it. And you'll be able to grab your fish and just pick them right up. And pull them right off by hand. So that smoked fish is, I can tell you for a fact, is going to be absolutely fantastic. As you get ready to use it, I'll give you the side angle. So down the middle of the fish here, there's going to be bones, so you're going to want to just cut that out, and you see the little bit of the bloodline right here on the bottom. You don't really want to eat the bloodline, the skin, or the bones in the middle. So you just kind of flay down and out. It comes off real easy. So an absolutely fantastic dish. It's great with crackers, cheese, anything on a light afternoon, a glass of wine, or it's the Wahoo itself makes my favorite fish dip on the planet. Hey guys, Captain Matt. Thanks for tuning in on today's episode. As you could see, it was an absolute blast. Started off with a goal of doing some sword fishing and then doing a little deep drop and trying out some new equipment, which we never got into. If you haven't had a chance yet, please smash that subscribe button. If you like today's video and like the content, give me a thumbs up. Captain Matt signing off for today.